Welcome back to another episode of Stacking M's. I am Tara Payton, marketing consultant and business coach. And today I really want to talk to you about this topic. It is um, something that I see all too often happening in the industry, in the e-commerce space, especially with brands who do not have a clear strategy. So here's the thing. When you have your products always on sale or you're always promoting a sale and that's the only thing that your customers see, you are actually repelling people away from your brand. Now, I want you to think about Macy's, right? Macy's is always on sale. They always have a sale, red door buster, 20% off, holiday sale, sale for this holiday, Labor Day, every day they have a sale. So as a consumer, ask yourself, I want you to think about this. Have you ever paid full price for anything at Macy's? I know I haven't because I'm always like, they got a coupon somewhere and I will go find the coupon or the uh, associate at the store will say, hey, we have this coupon you can use or we're running a sale or promotion. So your consumers get trained that your brand is always on sale and they never want to pay full price. So what that does is it really diminishes your brand's value and you are attracting a customer that you probably do not want because they're not really loyal. They're just coming to you because they know they can get a few dollars off here and there and go on about their business. Now, when you think about this, people are really going to stop caring. They just really don't care. They don't um, you know, want to come to you for any exclusivity because you don't have any exclusivity because your brand is always on discount. What also happens, and I've had clients who have expressed this to me before they start working with me, that they often see that um, their customers that make the largest purchases only purchase when they have a sale. And they don't make any purchases in between the time of that last sale where they made a big purchase and the next sale, right? Why? Because they're stocking up on items, they're getting them at a discount. That means that there is no longer that frequency of purchase that's required that's actually going to keep you um, in business and get you more profitable. Also, from a profitability standpoint, I want you to think about this. A customer that already exists typically spends more with you, right? So they may be buying in bulk, but they're also getting a discount. So any discounts that you're running, make sure you're thinking about your profit margins and how that actually impacts your business in that way. So sometimes when you're running a sale, customers will start to assume that your price is actually a disguise and you're kind of like trying to set them up. So some brands and somebody got sued for this, Nike actually got sued for this. They um, were sued because customers felt that they were not being honest with their prices in their factory stores. And what that meant was they were raising the prices on their factory products and then giving discounts but they weren't really legit discounts. So you have to be very strategic about when you run discounts, why you're running a discount, and there are ways for you to use discounts to your advantage, right? I wanna be very clear, I'm not saying that discounts are bad, they actually are good when they are used with a purpose and they have a strategy behind them. The other thing <laughs> that I want you all to stop doing right now is running a sale on every holiday just because it's a holiday, okay? If it is Columbus Day and you don't wanna have a sale, you don't have to have a sale. Just because it's a federal holiday or it's on the calendar does not mean that you need to give a discount, right? So I want you to think about what are those key points in the year where you're going to run a sale, a major sale, right? You want to identify them. You want to make sure that they are centered around your brand. You want to make sure that you're not doing them too often. So I often recommend to my, my clients and my students that they should run two major sales per year, right? And think about it like this. Um, Victoria's Secret does a semi-annual sale. 
it means two times a year, you know they're going to have a big sale. But people are not going to just wait for the sale to go buy their lingerie because they need lingerie today, right? So you want to get people in the habit of, yes, they know when those big major sales are that you're having. However, they are still willing to come and shop and um, purchase from your store because they're not just going to wait around for a sale. Now, I talked about sales not being a bad thing, right? And they're not bad when they're actually used strategically. And a few ways that you can actually use a, a sale in a strategic way to, um, to get to an end goal that you have for your business. So a few of those ways is you can use a sale to actually move through inventory, right? Let's say you have purchased a um, hundred of an item and you've only sold 50 and it's coming to, it's a seasonal item. The season is ending. You may want to give a discount, right? Because what's worse than um, giving a discount at this point is having the inventory just kind of sit in stock and take up space. So you can give a discount to move excess inventory, you can also prompt urgency to buy, right? Make sure that you are urging people to make purchases quickly so that they're not missing out on products before giving that discount. But you can also use that as a way to incentivize people to make a purchase. One of the other things that, and you have to be very strategic in how you do this, is you can bundle a slow selling product with a best selling product. Now, I say you have to be strategic in how you do this because if you're bundling a, a best-selling product with a product that's not really moving that well, um, you want to ask yourself a few questions before you do this. Is the product that's not selling well not selling well because it's not good? Or is it not selling well because there has not been a lot of buzz or communication around the product, right? So be very clear on what side of the line that falls because what you don't want is people to buy this bundle, get the product that was not moving fast enough through your inventory and hate it, right? Because then you're opening yourself up to negative reviews, negative feedback, and things like that. Now, if it's not selling because it just didn't have a lot of buzz or it's something that you kind of want to push because you know it's awesome and when people use it, they will convert and want to come back and use it again and again and again, then that's a great opportunity for you to bundle those products together and get them sold. I want you to also think through how you're using discounts to move people through the customer buyer's journey. And if you're not familiar with the customer buyer's journey, that is when you take someone who is not aware of your brand, they're not aware that they have a problem, and they go through these steps, these phases, right? So they go from not being aware to becoming aware, to then considering your brand, to then making a purchase, and then finally becoming a loyal customer. Now it's your responsibility to usher people through that process and to understand how to use discounts at each stage of the process to either get a customer to make a first purchase or get someone to make a final decision or get someone to make an additional purchase right after they have already become a customer so think about that lay out the customer buyer's journey for your brand and understand at what point would you actually use a discount to help accelerate them through that process that is a awesome way for you to use discounting in sales to accelerate customers through the process. So now what I want to do is I'm going to go through five ways that you can actually use discounts and not diminish your brand. So the first way is to use it for a first time purchase. And we often see this on brand websites where a brand will say, hey, sign up for our email list or our text list and get 15% off. Um, give us your phone number and get a free, um, you know, a free product, a free mini product. That's a way for you to discount and provide a sale that is going to move someone through that customer buyer's journey and get them to make that first purchase and also get them to try your products if it's their first time. Another way that you can use discounting strategically is to use it in the abandoned cart sequence. 
So abandoned carts, there is a huge, huge, huge opportunity for you in the abandoned cart. And I don't know if you've ever gone on your Shopify and you've looked in that abandoned cart section and you see how much money, potential money, right, is there for you to make. So when you see that and you're very clear on that, you want to make sure that you have your abandoned cart set up and you're giving people an incentive to actually make a purchase, right? Now, the incentive doesn't need to be a straight up discount, but it can be. You can say, hey, get 10% off this purchase or 15%, whatever you want to do um, to close it out. A lot of times people do not finish their checkout process because shipping is too expensive. So consider giving free shipping to your customers in the abandoned cart stage. Okay, so another way for you to strategically use discounts is to celebrate a milestone with your customers, right? One of the things that Sephora does really, really well is when you go in there, if you're a part of their Beauty Insider program, you know that you can get a free product on your birthday, right? That is a milestone. And they're not giving you a full size product. They're giving you a mini sample size product. That cost to them is not that expensive, but how you feel as a customer that you're getting a free product, you feel valued. And you also feel really good because they remembered your birthday, right? So that's a very personalized touch that you can add to your brand. Now, you don't just have to celebrate customer milestones. You can also celebrate your own milestones. Milestone. So let's say it's your um, anniversary. You can do an anniversary promotion and give a discount in that way to celebrate that you've been in business for five years, six years, or whatever that time frame is, right? So think about what are those milestones that are one, important to you and your brand, and then two, are important to your customers that will make them feel like, wow, they really see me, they get me, they understand me, and that is also going to help you build brand loyalty and customer retention, which is my next point, customer retention, right? Customer retention is something that you should absolutely be paying attention to, and that is because it is cheaper. It's kind of like the saying, like, right? It's cheaper to keep her with people who are thinking about getting a divorce. You want to keep your customers. It's cheaper to keep them. It is um, more expensive to get a new customer than it is to keep an existing customer. So in order to keep those existing customers happy, think about ways in which you can actually provide discounts or promotions to them that are exclusive to them. These are not public. These are exclusive to them that will keep them coming back to shop with your brand and purchase more consistently and also buy more at checkout, right? So they're filling up their cart. They might've made a $50 purchase the first time. The second time they're spending $150 with you. And then number five, I want you to think about setting up a loyalty program. This is absolutely, absolutely valuable for your brand. I already talked about the Sephora Beauty Insider program, and it's such a great, great program because the way that they've structured it, the incentives that they have on the back end, and again, the beauty of a loyalty program is that you can design it you can determine what are the incentives. You can determine how much someone needs to spend with you in order to receive the benefits of being in the loyalty program. So it doesn't mean you're just giving away discounts. You're giving away incentives and discounts because your customers are actually purchasing from you on a consistent basis and or just, you know, blowing a bag with your business, right? So I want you to get this stat. 63% of people modify their spending because of being enrolled in a loyalty program. That means that they are going to go above and beyond. They're going to spend more. They're going to look at checkout and say, oh, I need to reach this threshold in order to get X, Y, Z incentive. And I need to go find some other products to put in the cart to check out. How awesome would you feel to know that you have customers enrolled in a loyalty program and they are going to look for more products that they can put in the cart before they check out, which is increasing their average order value, increasing your overall sales, improving your profit profitability, and then you incentivize them and give them a bonus or some special offer or something like that. 
So loyalty programs are absolutely something that you should consider. And that is a great way to give a discount or have a sale without it actually diminishing your brand, your value and things like that. So we covered a lot today and I just want to make sure that you understand and I'll reiterate it again. Sales are not bad when they're used strategically. And they are oftentimes used to help you with customer retention and getting people through the customer buyer's journey quicker, right? So determine how you're going to use them, at what points you're going to put them in the customer buyer's journey. And I wish you nothing but success with putting your sales and discounts and incentives into your business. And I will see you on the next episode of Stacking Apps. Mm -hmm. Don't ever feel, don't ever stay in a situation longer than necessary because you feel like you had a time commitment. 